IBM announced its first Power 10 based server called the E1080. Uh, you could read my Forbes article to, to get uh, everything that uh, all the details, but essentially, uh, in, in my opinion, it reinforces fit for purpose stacks out there in the industry. And whether it's an iPhone doing its own silicon, OS, middleware, uh, and applications, you have uh, this new server that has the new Power 10, uh, which is very good at, at specific big data workloads and now inference, machine learning inference on those workloads. But, you know, I, I, IBM is doing what uh, people now see as really cool. Heck, even AWS with uh, Graviton and Trainium and Inferentia and all the stacks they put put, put on that. And uh, the uh, Power, Power 1080 is not good for all environments, but the environments that it is really good for, in my opinion, is SAP, SAP HANA. It set a world record SAP benchmark uh, with eight sockets. And I believe there's going to be a 16 socket design in the wings that's going to pretty much blow everything else uh, out of the water. I was really happy to see IBM uh, show benchmarks directly going up against HP and uh, Google Cloud. Uh, I, I, I like when companies do that. It gives me a level of confidence. Uh, as it re relates to uh, licenses and efficiency with Oracle, they put up some very credible numbers as well. And then uh, finally, uh, 4x more containerized workloads in Red Hat, which surprisingly, uh, IBM owns that company. Uh, and, and it makes total sense to me. I don't think they're making up any of these numbers. I mean, they, they might be comparing to uh, Cascade Lake, for, but from an availability standpoint, it's kind of hard to get even a hold of uh, Ice Lake. Uh, and that SAP benchmark, uh, you know, if if AMD and their partners or Intel and their partners want to put up a, a better number, uh, they, they certainly uh, can do this. The one, I wouldn't call it a critique or one thing that I wish IBM would do is I really want them to go straight after x86 business from a sales and marketing perspective. I feel like, you know, on, on one side, I applaud IBM for servicing its clients, right? They literally are one of the best companies at delivering what their clients want them to deliver. Uh, which is why we see the success of, of things like IBM Z, right? The IBM Z is the best at, at what it does. It's the most secure. It's an east-west transaction uh, engine. Um, but uh, can you gain share doing that, right? IBM has less than 1% of the server market share out there. And I really want to see them with this platform go after the x86 market. I mean, is that because I don't, like Dell or HP, uh, HPE or Lenovo? No, I just think we need more competition to stir up the pot. That's what I'd like to see them do differently. Yeah, Pat, your write-up was really good, and we'll make sure to throw that down into the show notes. I didn't have a chance to attend. Um, I did capture some of the post-mortems from different uh, analysts and some of the different journalists. I think you made a couple of really interesting points that we should double-click on really quickly. Um, First is, you know, IBM continues to put really, really good hardware out there in the marketplace. But your point that you made about the marketing still befuddles me a little bit. Why does the company do so much work to develop such good hardware and then allow that hardware to take so little market share? And I do understand part of their thing is they have specialized applications and customers that they almost are almost building this stuff for and it, yeah. they, they deliver it they succeed with it um you know but at the same time it's like if it's built this well and it's this useful there must be other applications in the market and like i said you've got this massive almost four hundred thousand workforce out there build that market even get to two percent you're talking about a huge growth of the business um the second thing i did really like and you have a good section in your article about it was the hybrid cloud story. This is IBM's story. IBM is not, despite the fact that it has public cloud, is not building its narrative around public cloud. It's building its narrative around the hybrid cloud. Well, Power 10 um, 
is really built with that in mind. It's built for this frictionless architecture, frictionless hybrid cloud is how they're coining it. And the idea is, is you know, taking power uh, virtual servers, OpenShift, IBM Cloud, and creating seamless frictionless um, migration of workloads between you know public and private. And I think you know it's not universal and it can't do it for every application, but it showed in its story and its rollout that it is addressing this early and often with the Power 10 story with these new servers. So, you know, again, if you keep in mind what IBM is trying to do, the story here is about building something that's useful and hybrid. If you look at Pat, it sounds like you and I share an opinion as an analyst. You have a great product, sell more. You have a great product, you have the architecture, you have the infrastructure, you have great benchmarks, you know, let it be known, tell the world, keep talking about it beyond the launch day. But congratulations on a successful launch. Um, I think you ended your, your article by something like, I'll tell you in a year. Yeah. So let's come back to this in a year and see if this good product is matched with good sales.